Well, Singaporeans voting from overseas or nursing homes could soon have new ways to vote. Postal voting and portable lab booths are being considered by the Elections Department. It plans to pilot these arrangements at the upcoming presidential election due by September next year. If all goes well, overseas Singaporeans may also vote through post. Mail-in votes could start a day after nomination. Voters would first have to log into ELD's online portal using their Sing Pass before downloading the return envelope and postal ballot paper. Now, these are postage paid where available. The return envelopes will have a unique QR code. It won't contain any personal information, but it can authenticate the voter. A wet ink signature on the envelope will also be checked against a specimen signature submitted during registration. Now, these must be posted before polling day in Singapore and reach the ELD not later than 10 days after polling day. Now, an update will be given on whether these envelopes are received after the counting of overseas votes. A criteria for the rejection of envelopes is also under review. Now, as for nursing homes, portable lap booths could also be used for those voting from their beds. It will have shields at the front and the sides, and candidates and polling agents could be present to observe voting. Uh, guidelines might also be imposed on what the nursing staff can and cannot do. They may help a voter sit up but would have to move away when the voter is ready to cast the ballot. An election official can assist those who are physically unable to mark the ballot paper. The Elections Department has consulted 13 political parties, nearly 40 nursing home operators and close to 3,300 overseas Singaporeans and the public. Officials say the new voting arrangements are largely welcomed. Well, let's get more uh, with uh, Associate Professor Eugene Tan from SMU School of Law. Uh, Prof Tan, what are your thoughts on these slew of new measures? Jill, I think these measures uh, are to be welcomed. I think what is important is that we are trying to uh, improve uh, voter accessibility. Uh, and in doing so, um, you know, that means that more eligible voters you know, would be able uh, to vote. Uh, and I think that gives a good effect uh, to a citizen's uh, constitutional right to vote. Um, so I think this sense of uh, enfranchisement, right, the idea that more overseas voters, uh, senior citizens or, or people in, in nursing homes, you know, uh, will not be, will be able to vote. I think that's something which, which is important. Uh, I think it, it again demonstrates the you know, the centrality of uh, Singaporeans being able to exercise, um, you know, their democratic choice. Uh, I would say that, you know, the, the pandemic, um, you know, we had the uh, general elections of 2020 uh, mm. conducted during a pandemic. And I think that perhaps has, uh, you know, got the government as well as the elections department, you know, to think about how we can leverage on technology, you know, on, on, on a whole variety of measures, you know, to ensure um, you know, that uh, voter accessibility uh, remains strong uh, in Singapore. Um, so I think, you know, that the measures that have been announced, uh, I think they will be very, they'll be very much welcome, you know, particularly by those uh, Singaporeans living abroad. Yeah, and as you mentioned, there, there is that group that will say, well, it's, it's about time. But then there are also others who are thinking about the complications that these, uh, this new uh, voting systems could present. I think those are legitimate concerns. Um, and, and I would say that, you know, we're talking more about feeding problems, um, you know, unfamiliarity with, um, you know, the, the new uh, voting arrangements, um, you know, rather than, than complications. Um, so I think it, it is important, you know, for, for voters, uh, particularly those living abroad, you know, to be familiar, you know, with the arrangements. Uh, they certainly would also have to make uh, accommodation. So, for example, you know, when you think about the, the postal ballots, um, you know, they would have to have access to a printer, you know, to be able to print, um, you know, the the envelope as well as as the ballot sheet. Um, so, you know, there are plans to make uh, you know these documents, um, you know, available. Uh, but I don't think it would be possible, um, you know, to reach out to every um, overseas voter. So I think, you know, it is important, um, you know, to recognize that these are special arrangements um, and that 
you know, it'd be ideal, you know, if Singaporeans were to, particularly those living abroad, you know, were to have a good um, understanding of, of, of the requirements, um, you know, and to make the necessary arrangements. Um, and when you think about, uh, you know, the Singaporean voters who are living in, in nursing homes, I think that again, you know, it is important to ensure, um, you know, the staff in, in the nursing homes, you know, as well as the uh, election officials, you know, overseeing the conduct of the poll uh, in the nursing homes, you know, that they are very familiar with the rules and that they would be able to identify, uh, e you know, ir 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 irregularities, you know, that could develop, um, you know, to ensure that, uh, you know, the, the, the importance of uh, voting secrecy is not a uh, compromise at all. Um, so I think it, it, it will take some getting used to, um, but we need to make a start. And I think, you know, uh, these measures are a step uh, in the right direction. I uh, wanted to talk to you a bit about the technology that's being used in these suggested measures. Do you see it being expanded uh, from that specific group of overseas voters and those in the nursing homes to the regular voters? And would there be challenges with legality and security there? I think certainly when we look at this uh, uh, overseas voting, um, I think we are trying to have voter accessibility, but I think the elections department are very clear, you know, that they are not going to compromise, uh, you know, on the integrity of the whole electoral process. Um, so when you think about the technology, the use of QR codes, uh, the, the, the verification of uh, wet ink signatures, I think those are measures that could also be adopted uh, you know, in, in limited circumstances, uh, when we talk about polling in Singapore, I think, you know, it is also important to recognise that uh, voters must be comfortable. And I think for most uh, Singaporeans, you know, my sense is that, you know, they would want to make the trip down to the uh, polling station, you know, to be able to, um, you know, cast their ballots uh, in person. But I think the pandemic has reminded us, you know, that it is important for there to be robust alternative arrangements you know, so that even if we had to conduct, uh, you know, a general election or a presidential election, you know, in the midst of a pandemic or some other uh, extraordinary situation, you know, we would be able to uh, carry out this democratic exercise, uh, ensure that the votes are secret and ensure that, you know, the integrity of process uh, is secured. Uh, and so people will have trust, you know, in, in, in the outcomes, uh, you know, of the, of the particular poll. Um, so I think that there is a lot that we can learn, you know, from the um, trial that will be done. It, it is a real world trial you know, during the presidential next year in September. Uh, and, and I think that will give us greater confidence, you know, in exploring, uh, you know, more ways to ensure that, you know, we continue to improve, uh, you know, voter accessibility while ensuring that, uh, you know, every voter's vote remains secret. Uh, Prof Tan, thanks as always uh, for coming by. That was uh, Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the SMU School of Law.